Elden Ring's combat system is extremely rich and it offers many options for players to play in exactly the way that is the most fun for them. Whether you like to use sorceries or incantations or whether you like to use a sword and board style or wield a greatsword with two hands, the game has many options for you. Still, all of these options fall within the same set of rules and one of those rules is that you need to have resources to spend. This is where mind comes in. In Elden Ring, mind is the attribute that governs FP. It also affects focus. FP stands for focus points and it is the resource that lets our character use all of its special abilities. Whether you are casting spells, using Ashes of War or certain consumables, every character needs to use FP. And this means that every character needs mind. The general idea is that the more mind you have, the more FP you have. And the more FP you have, the more often you can use the best techniques in the game. On the surface, it is simple. That said, it does come with its own special characteristics. Please take a look at these two charts. On the top, you will see the correlation between your mind level and your total FP. In other words, how much total FP we have on each level of mind. On the bottom, you will see the correlation between your mind level and the FP increase per level. In other words, how much FP we actually get every time we increase our mind. Reading the charts can give you a general understanding of the actual values on a per level basis. That being said, the most important thing is to look at the shape of the charts. On the top, you see that during the earlier levels, the increase of total FP is more pronounced and as we hit the later levels, the increase begins to flatten out. On the bottom, you see that during the earlier levels, we get a high amount of FP per level. And as we get to the higher levels, this amount begins to decrease very rapidly. This, my dear viewer, is the work of diminishing returns. The more mind we have, the more FP we will have. But also, the more we level up mind, the less FP we will get per level. Please look at the chart at the bottom we can see that mind behaves very interestingly when it comes to leveling up. In fact, mind is one of the most generous stats when it comes to increasing its level. At first, we don't get much FP per level. That said, if we continue to level up mind, there comes a point where we begin to get more benefit on each level up. This first break point happens at level 15, and it is when we see a big jump in the amount of FP we get per level. Our benefits increase considerably. This continues to happen as we level up our mind more. Once we hit 35 mind, we get to another breakpoint where our benefits increase yet again. Going past 35 mind will give us even more benefits than before. And this continues all the way up to level 50. As you can see, after 50 mind, the amount of FP we get per level begins to decrease, but it's not by a lot. It keeps going and it keeps decreasing up to level 60, but we still get good benefits up to this level, even though they have been decreasing. It is not until after level 60 that our FP per level plummets and we barely get any benefit from our investments. The conclusion is clear, and it is that leveling up mind up to level 50 will always give you increasing benefits for each of your investments. After level 50, these benefits begin to go down, but they are still good enough to invest until we reach level 60. And then, it is after level 60 that the benefits for our investment decrease considerably and it is no longer worth putting points into the stats. From this information, we can understand that mind has a first soft cap at level 50, which is when our benefits stop increasing and then from level 50 to 60, our benefits begin to decrease. But they are still good enough to merit the investment so it is worthwhile to reach this level. That being said, 
Once we go past level 60 mind, the increase in FP is no longer worth it. Diminishing returns are far too aggressive, and it is a better idea to put the points somewhere else. This makes 60 mind the second and final soft cap of the skill. Now, please understand that I am not saying that you should always level up mind to 60 on every single character. That is not the case. What I am saying is that if your mind is under level 60, you will get a good return on every single level that you choose to invest in it. Taking into consideration how generous mind is at giving FP, the question now really does beg itself. How much should you level up your mind? The answer, of course, is that it depends. And it depends on you and what you are looking for. For example, there are those players that want as much FP as possible because spellcasting is their main form of offense. These players even prefer to put more points into mind than they do vigor. They end up with a lot of FP, but a very low amount of health. Then there are those players like myself who put into mind whatever amount of points they have left in the build. After I have every other stat exactly how I want it, I put the rest of my points into mind. Sometimes that means I have 30 mind, while other times I only have 19 mind in a build. For me, personally, mind is secondary, and I adapt to whatever I have at the moment. At the end of the day, there is no right or wrong way of doing things. That being said, I can tell you what is the most statistically efficient level of mind. My dear viewer, if you want maximum efficiency, you need to run 38 mind. And the reason is simple. At 38 mind, a character has exactly 221 FP. We know for a fact that a fully upgraded plus 12 Cerulean Flask recovers exactly 220 FP. This means that at 38 mind, you will always get the maximum amount of FP recovery and it will always fill up your FP bar. This way, you can guarantee yourself that not a single point of FP recovery is wasted and at the same time, you can always count on a full refill of your resources. This is easy to see and calculate as well. Once you are empty, you can count on a full refill from each Cerulean flask you have. Now, obviously, if you can reach this amount of FP with other items and equipment, then you can have less mind. But the point here is that if you can manage to get about 221 FP, then you will always get the maximum efficiency out of all of your FP recovery. Like every stat, mind also has its own specific effect. In this case, increasing mind also increases your character's focus resistance. Focus is the character's ability to resist the influence of the sleep and madness status effects. The more mind we have, the more focus we will have, and the more resistant our character will be to these effects. The rate of increase is as follows. There is no increase from 1 to 30 mind we get an additional 3 points of focus from 31 to 40 mind. We get an additional 0.5 points of focus from 41 to 60 mind. We get an additional 0.25 points of focus from 61 to 99 mind. Mind is one of those stats that has a different amount of importance depending on the player. To some, it is extremely important, to others, not so much. Still, we cannot ignore that mind is one of the most generous attributes in the game, giving the player a constantly increasing benefit all the way up to level 50. At the end of the day, the amount of mind and FP a build should have is extremely dependent on the type of character that we play. As I mentioned before, there is no right or wrong answer to the question, how much mind should I have? I just hope to give you all of the information so that you can make that decision on your own to the best of your abilities. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope I get to see you on the next one.